so uh, I'm, I'm, I'm Joe Martin. I've been working uh, with FileMaker for about seven years in AWS services for the past four years. I, I wanted to thank Heidi Porter for showing us um, how you can use machine learning, how it's, how it's enabling us to solve problems that we've never been able to solve before, programmatically speaking, um, and how it can also impact your business's bottom line. However, um, machine learning can have a fairly steep learning curve, and it can take a lot of time to build and train your models before you even see any results. So today, I wanted to show you how you can use AWS recognition to utilize machine learning in FileMaker within just a couple scripts. Uh, but first, let me talk a little bit about what Amazon recognition is. On the back end, recognition is a collection of pre-built machine learning models. These are the, the AI services that, that Heidi was talking about. Um, on the front end, the end that we're actually concerned with, that, that we'll actually interact with, recognition is a fairly straightforward API that we can make calls to from FileMaker. So um, <clears throat> the first thing I wanted to show you was object and scene detection, which is one of these pre-built machine learning models that recognition offers. And uh, so let's, uh, let's jump in here. I want to show you Amazon's demo, and then I'll show you how you can do this in FileMaker. So um, if we look at Amazon's demo here, they've, they've, they've actually exposed recognition through this, this nice web interface here. And we can see it do analysis on this photo, and it's able to pick up a good number of objects here. It can, it can pick up this person in the middle of the photo, the skateboard beneath them, the cars along the side of the road. And, even some of the wheels in the, uh, in the cars in the forefront of this image. And um, they've actually gone one step further and provided coordinates or bounding boxes for each of the objects that it was able to detect. And they've drawn these little squares around them. You may also notice that each of these results are accompanied by a confidence score. A confidence score is essentially a measure of how confident is the algorithm that this object is what it thinks it is. So to clarify that confusing sentence, I like to anthropomorphize the algorithm and uh, imagine it's telling me that I'm 99% sure this is a car. I'm 55% sure this is a sedan. Let me back up just a, one slide here, because I want to take a look at the other photo they've done analysis on. And you can see we don't have any bounding boxes here. It wasn't able to sort of draw, draw squares around any objects for us, but it was able to detect the environment or scene in this photo. This is the scene in object and scene detection. And it can tell this is an urban environment. And we've got a couple other labels here, city, town, metropolis, uh, so, it, so it can pick up those, um, those scenes as well. So let's take a look at the API call you'd make to actually get this information. And I'm going to do this in a little bit of reverse order. Uh, so let's say, um, let's say you've uploaded this photo to Amazon. You've asked it to do object and scene detection. This is the API response that you would get back. And it's JSON, which is nice for FileMaker. But if I drill in just a little bit here, I'm looking for, here we go. It, it's found an instance of a car. And this is paired with a list of bounding boxes. I mentioned these a second ago. And now you can see what I'm talking about. Bounding boxes give us the coordinates on a percentile scale of where this object is in the photo. So this is, uh, you know, 0.4% um, to the left and 50% from the top. So if we were so inclined, we could draw a nice little box around it using our JSON response. The request that we, um, the request that we need to make to get this response, I mean, it couldn't be more straightforward. It's, it's, it's dead simple, really. All we need is a, a base64 encoded image that we pack into our really simple JSON object here. We send that up to Amazon, and we get our result back. 
So that's pretty much the gist of it. Let's kind of look at uh, how this would work in FileMaker. So I've recreated Amazon's demo in FileMaker, and uh, we've, we've got an image we've already done analysis on here, but to, to uh, analyze a new image, we can just create a new record, drag a photo into our container field, run our detect label script, and pretty much exactly what you would expect. We've got our objects, we've got our confidence scores, we even have a web viewer where we've drawn the bounding boxes around the objects detected in this photo. And we've got the little pop-up too that can show us the label. So um, I, I've, got a, I've got a download link for this demo file in, in, the, in the slides here, but come by the booth if you want to get that sooner. There, uh, the script that makes this request only requires you to modify three parameters. Um, your AWS access key and secret key, these are pretty much a given if you're interacting with any AWS service. And the Base64 encoded data, the image that you want analyzed by FileMaker. So when we're putting together our request, you probably saw this coming, but um, well, we can just use JSON set element to build our JSON objects, and the request JSON will end up looking something like this. Of course, I've truncated the base64 data because that gets pretty lengthy. Optionally, if you are familiar with S3 or you are already using S3 to store your images, you can use this other route to make the API call where you specify an S3 bucket and a path name to the image you want analyzed. Amazon, instead of uploading this you know, giant base64 encoded payload, Amazon will go fetch the image from S3, do the analysis, and return the result you know, like you want. Um, <clears throat> some other parameters that we can use here, min confidence. So you can specify a minimum confidence that you want your results to have. So only return results that meet or exceed this minimum confidence score. Also, max labels, if we only want to return the first 50 or 80 or 100 objects detected in a photo. And uh, the, the request JSON would look something like that down at the bottom. So recognition is not limited to only object and scene detection. It can also do text detection in an image where it's able to draw our bounding boxes around the words, extract those, return those as JSON. Um, and this is, this is kind of anecdotal, but cool. We're, we're scanning people's badges at our booth, and um, some, some of the badges are missing barcodes. So we can actually snap a photo of their badge and extract the information that way. Um, recognition can also do facial recognition, where you send up a photo and it's able to detect if there are faces in the photo first. And then also we'll, we'll get scores for each emotion that we can see on these faces, as well as a variety of other facial features. Do they have a beard? Are they happy? Are they wearing glasses? All that sort of stuff. Some other machine learning services that they offer, face comparison, which is what's pictured here, Given two photos of the same person, can, we tell, can, can, can machine learning tell if that same person exists between the two photos, even if they're at you know, slightly different angles here? Um, I, I'm going to come back to this in just a second. Uh, the, other, the other service they offer is image moderation. So if you, were, if you have to post photos in maybe a public forum, somewhere where kids might see them, image moderation can tell you if there is risque content in a photo. Another thing recognition can do is celebrity detection, which Heidi actually mentioned. And I wanted to point this out because this is, this is funny. We have correct, it has correctly identified the people on the left and the right, but the person in the middle is most decidedly not Mark Pellegrino. That is your next speaker, Johan Hedman. <laughs> So recognition has, has made a bad, has, has given it a bad label here. Now, to recognition's credit, 
If you go back and you use the face comparison API and you compare Johan's face to a picture of Mark Pellegrino's face, recognition will tell you, no, these are not the same person. So I think it, it makes, up, makes, makes up for itself a little bit there. Um, I think recognition is a really good entry point into machine learning. It's, it's very straightforward and easy to get up and running. And um, if you need a more customized approach to machine learning, something that's specifically tailored to your business, stick around for Johan and Luke's session up next where they talk about how they used machine learning to build a chatbot that you can talk to and interact with and actually trigger FileMaker activity through talking to this uh, machine learning service. So thank you.